What's up, y'all? I'm Andy Story with Poster Grind, your neighborhood art director that designs movie posters for a living. True story. Last week, I was working on a TV project and I needed to create some cold breath. Somebody was outside during winter and they needed the cold breath to be a part of the art. Now, I haven't done cold breath before, so I was searching YouTube for tutorials on how to do this exact thing I'm going to show you today. I ran across one of my favorite channels, Blue Lightning TV Photoshop, which you should go check out because there's a ton of stuff you can learn there as well. And I saw a video that the guy Marty did in 2015, and it was a uh, tutorial on how to do, how to create steam off of coffee cups. So basically what I did is I've taken, I've taken some aspects of that video and applied them to this situation and added my own little tweaks so that you can incorporate it into your artwork, artwork in case you need to create some realistic looking cold breath during winter. So without further ado, let's dive on in. <laughs> What? All right, y'all get that Photoshop fired on up. Let's go ahead and create some amazing cold breath for this winter movie poster that we have to do. This is going to be probably the easiest way to create your own fake breath if the client deems they need it, which has happened to me like I was explaining before. But first, let's go over the assets that we will be using. Assets meaning the photography for this particular tutorial and or movie poster. First things first, I've got this little blurry blizzard style texture that we can use. I actually picked this up at Unsplash, which happens to be a great place to look for photography that you can use in your projects. However, they don't necessarily have a commercial license uh, that uh, is up to par with what I would require for my work, but it is a cool place to pick out stuff. The other asset that we will be working with or piece of photography is this young lady smiling outside, looking winterish, but she's missing cold air breath. And that's what the client wants in this particular situation. So that's what we will be doing. Uh, I've already masked this out to save the monotony of having to watch me do so. If you are new to Photoshop and want to learn how to mask out things, then you should probably go check out a very cool tutorial where I took a old gun and replaced it with a new gun for a teaser poster, which uh, is in the channel below. And then last but not least, I picked out a brand new background. Uh, I like this background. This is over at Envato Elements. And I should also say that this lady, this young lady is at Envato Elements as well. It's a great website to pick up stock photography, graphics, textures, plugins, actions, you name it, they got it. And the subscription is only, I don't know, a little over 200 bucks a year. And if you're working commercially, it does come with a commercial license. So that's why I, I like to work with them on certain projects. The other cool thing is that if you guys do subscribe with them, we get a little bit of money as well for referring them business. So I really, really, really appreciate that if you guys do that. It helps keep this channel going and keep me motivated. All right, to get started, now that you have your image masked out, let's go ahead and create a gray background so we can see what we're doing when we paint our cold breath. So uh, pretty much like a 50% gray will, will do. I'm just using an adjustment layer and then I just picked the gray as you saw. And then up here back in your art layer, go ahead and hit new layer down here, the plus sign, and then hit B for brush. And then over here, make sure we are painting with white. And the easy way to do that is you can get you can hit D and that's going to create pure black or pure white and then hit X once and now we have white. And now with your brush, you wanna make your brush size a little on the bigger side. So hold down control and option and then drag to the right or left to decrease or increase the size of your brush. And then you want your brush to be a hardness of 0% and then up here on flow, keep that at 100, and we're just gonna drop our opacity somewhere around 50% to get our brush stroke going, and it's gonna be somewhat transparent. So the first couple brushes are gonna be, whoops, make sure we're painting on a new layer, so hit the plus sign for new layer, and then we're gonna to wanna to brush little snakes a couple times, and then you can decrease the size of your brush every two strokes like that. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It's gonna take 
uh, some practice to get used to or to figure out what works for your particular project. And now that we have these, I'm not sure if these are going to work or not, but we have a good starting point. And from here, we have to go up to filter. And then on filter, we're going to go down to other. And then on other, we're going to go to maximum. And since I've already done this, it's already around 30. So have your radius go to 30 and then your preserve, make sure that that's clicked to roundness and not squareness. Hit OK. The filter basically kind of smooths everything out, but we still need to do another filter. So go back up to filter, blur, and then surface blur, and that's gonna smooth out everything even a little bit more. Radius 10, threshold 25. And from here, we can just go ahead and reduce the opacity somewhere around 50%. And then we can also make a copy commit or hit Command J. And then with this copy, we can go ahead and move it around. So I'm just moving it up a little further. And then that copy, we're gonna also warp it. Make sure you're clicked on that layer. Command T, which is gonna transform. And then now that we are in transform, right click and go down to warp. And we're just gonna warp it around so that it's a little different than that other layer. You want it to be a little bit on the abstract side and it's gonna take a little bit of trial and error. And then once you have something that you like, hit enter. And now we're gonna hit one more new layer. So go back down to the plus sign. And then from here, we're gonna click on that bottom layer one more time, hit command and it's gonna make a selection. So you see the little marching ants. And now back up to that layer that we, that we just created. And then from here, we're gonna make clouds, but Photoshop's gonna make it. So we can go back up to filter, render, clouds. And now we have this really cool, quick and easy abstract cloud to play around with. But first you gotta deselect by hitting Command D. And now let's just drag that cloud down below our other two layers that we already created. And then drag, or then turn the blending mode up here to somewhere around overlay or soft light. It just depends. So the overlay is a little stronger and then soft light is a little less strong. I'm gonna leave it on overlay for now. And from here, I'm just going to create a new, well, we're gonna mask out certain areas of our breath. So make sure that we are selected on each of the layers that we just painted and created. Hit Command G and now go down to the Japanese flag, the mask icon, hit that. And from here, we're going to paint out certain areas to make it look like it's dissipating into the, the air. And I like to go ahead and use a cloud brush and you can either make your own, your own or you can go to somewhere where, somewhere like Brush Easy and pick up a bunch of free brushes to use at your leisure. So this is a brush I created a little while back and I'm just gonna use this to paint out certain areas of the mask so that this disappears a little more. Actually, that's a little too strong. So I'm hitting Command Z and I'm gonna drop the opacity to around 8% and now I'm just gonna paint around our breath like that. And you can go back and forth. Once again, it's trial and error. I got a little carried away with the tutorial and I forgot to ask you to hit that like button. If you're enjoying this video and learning a ton, hit the like button now. I really appreciate it. It makes us feel like we're doing something right. Here, I'm gonna bring our background back into the equation and get rid of our gray background. And now we see our light source coming from behind her head. And then we're going to go ahead and create our Gaussian blur, which I've already done. So go up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and mine is set, it was set at 30, 31, somewhere around there. So that's, you can do the same or just see what works for you. Now we're totally missing out on our breath. We can't really see it. So what I'm gonna do is just drop the exposure on our background with an adjustment layer. So go to your adjustment layers, go to exposure, and then on exposure, I'm just gonna drop it down. And now it brings our breath back into the equation. And now, I'm going to invert that mask, Command I, and I'm gonna get the, the my regular round brush back. And then with my round brush, I'm just gonna crank the opacity to 100 and then drop the flow down to around four, 3%. That's usually what I paint with. 
And then I'm just going to paint in some of this darkness with using white. So now we can get our breath to come back. All right, and our breath is looking good. I'm just going to paint out a little bit with the soft or with the round brush on the mask. And then it's going to be stronger the closer to the mouth. So I'm going to paint some of that back in. And then you can always go ahead and move it around where you need it. And then just make sure that you, where you've painted on the mask, that you go back up and fix certain areas. And then I'm going to go back down to the background one more time with the curves and just going to darken it a tiny bit so that with the curves adjustment layer. And then actually I'm moving, I'm going to move this back up a little. And now from here, we're just going to go ahead and paint the, the breath because we have some of these violets, magentas, and yellows coming through. So we're going to add an adjustment layer, the hue and hue saturation. And then we're going to clip that with a clipping mask. So hit Option, Command G. And then on our, on our properties, we're going to hit Colorize. And now we can tweak the color to match our light source with the hue. So you just drag your hue until you see a color that is suitable. And now this is definitely matching the light source, but I don't want the color here. I only want it up here because the, the light rays are hitting that and this color down here would be a little darker. So we're just gonna paint with black on the mask and just paint out some of that in certain little areas so that it looks a little more realistic. And we can also move our background and then I'm just going to paint a little bit behind the background with a black brush very lightly. So it gets the breath. We're going to focus on the breath because this is a breath tutorial. And then I'm just going to push that breath. It's not working very well. So I'm just going to put that up and then command T and transform. And then just paint some of this out again. All right, you guys, so basically it takes a lot of massaging to make it look realistic in the product that I was working on last week. Uh, it took me a while to get it to look perfect. I don't have as much time to spend on this because you guys will probably get bored, but as you saw, I was just basically did the same exact thing one more time and played around with it and then added a mask and then added the color and I'm just gonna get rid of a little bit of that color right here so that the color hits the top a little more so. And then I darkened the background and now I just wanna add some finishing touches like the snowy texture. So with that snow texture, I'm just gonna drop this down to a screen and then drop the opacity significantly. And that kind of blends everything in. So we have a little bit of snowflakes. And I just want to kind of, if this is a movie poster, you want to mask out certain areas of the face. You don't want to really block the face. So I'm just masking that out. From here, we can just do one more adjustment layer with a color balance just to give it a little bit of a color treatment. And we'll add some cyan, a tiny bit of cyan, and maybe a little bit of magenta just to warm it. And that should be it. And then one last little thing, hit option, the plus sign for a new layer, name it N for noise, six, because we're gonna give it a six noise. Make sure your mode is on overlay and then fill overlay neutral with 50% gray, hit okay, filter, noise, add noise, and we're gonna add six. That's usually what I add for certain projects. And now that kind of blends everything together even better. And now we have a realistic looking cold breath with our sun source, with our light source popping in nice. And uh, that's basically it. So big shout out to Blue Lightning TV Photoshop. That guy is a beast with tutorials. I've learned a lot from him. I'm just taking this one more step so that uh, we're, we have cold breath working. And this is something I've used in the movie poster industry. So this is definitely usable. 
So thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Hit the like button and check us out on the next video or check our library of videos. We got a lot of stuff down below. Thank you.